Action. A pendulum is another great example of simple harmonic motion. It's simple because its amplitude doesn't change. And see if I, it's up to here, goes down, comes back up to there. Amplitude doesn't change, so that's the simple part. And then the harmonic motion, well, you can see it's going back and forth. One cycle is from now until now. That's one cycle. And if you time how long it takes, that's one period. Now, let's see how the period is affected by the length of the string. So you, you can see this motion. Well, what happens if I cut the length in half? How does the period change? Ah, we can see it takes much less time to do one cycle, which tells us the period is smaller. And if I shorten it even more, let's get the string out of the way, you can see it's going even faster. And the shorter the string, the shorter the period. The longer the string, the longer the period. So we know that the period of a pendulum depends on its length. Excellent. And in fact, the formula for a period of a pendulum goes as such. Now, pendulums throughout history were great timekeeping pieces. And only recently, um, where we now use some isotope cesium to get the most accurate piece of time, and until that, until then, we always used a pendulum. The pendulum was the master timekeeper. Now let's say, for example, you want to make a grandfather clock. And you want this period to be worth two seconds. So tick, tock, tick, tock. Each swing is a second. And we can find the length that you need by using this formula. Well, if we want the period to be equal to two seconds, and therefore, each half cycle is one tick of the clock. We plug this in here. So let's plug that in. 2 seconds equals 2 pi square root of L over G. And if we have that, we can then cancel a 2 from both sides. This is just a 1 now. In other words, I've divided by 2 from both sides. And so now I have. 1 equals pi square root of L over G. I'll square both sides. And when I square both sides, well, 1 squared is still 1. I get a pi squared here times L over G. And I know what G is. That's the acceleration of gravity. So assuming we want this clock to be run on Earth, we'll plug in uh, 10 meters per second squared. So we get 1 equals pi squared. Actually, let's use the more slightly more accurate, 9.8 seconds squared. And excellent. Now all we have to do is solve for L. So I'll do that by dividing both sides by pi squared and multiplying both sides by the 9.8 meters per second squared. Excellent. And these guys cancel. And now I've isolated for L. L is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared divided by pi squared. And if you plug that into your calculator, you get almost exactly a meter. And sure enough, I prearranged it. But this string and pendulum is almost exactly one meter. Always measure from the center of mass to the point where it's applied. And now you can check it out at home when we have a grandfather clock. Okay. Talk. Talk.